Hello, Moto. This is the Motorola Razor. This is Motorola's answer to the Samsung Galaxy Fold, the Huawei Mate X, and its vision for the future of foldable phones. But what's more than that, this is the rebirth of an icon, the original Motorola Razor from 2004 that was Motorola's best-selling phone yet. Everybody had one. It was a really special device, and here it's re-envisioned for 2019, 2020, and beyond. What makes the Razer unique is that this is the first working phone that we've seen that folds vertically from top to bottom instead of horizontally from side to side. Now, I'm gonna go into all of the details, the specs, how it feels, the hinge mechanism, but first, let's get pricing and availability out of the way. So we know that the phone will sell sometime in January. It goes on pre-order December 26th. It will cost $1,500 or $14.99 to be specific, and it will sell exclusively with Verizon at first. We also know that it will come to other countries eventually, but we don't have any other information after that. So now, let's get back to business. Using the Razer, I feel like a kid in a candy store because I had a flip phone, uh, so for me, this is pure nostalgia. I love opening and closing it. it. feels so natural and so tactile, and that's something that I think that we've really lost using just phones that look like roof shingles. What you're probably dying to know is what does it feel like to use, to open and to close, and is there a crease? Uh, the closing and opening mechanism is actually pretty good thanks to these hinges. I can actually hear it. I can hear the gears kind of grinding and moving, which is sort of interesting, but I can see them as well. Motorola has left the hinges exposed on purpose uh, a little bit on the outside and then also on the inside, and you can just see the seamless zipper of them. It feels controlled. Um, you can feel the tension and the flexion, and it snaps together in a satisfying way. There are magnets that are helping that. There is also virtually no air gap you can see just a tiny little bit, and that's not something that exists in the Galaxy Fold, where you do see a little bit of a loop at the end. And a lot of that has to do with the hinge system. Motorola has actually created a hollow in the hinge so that when the phone folds, the part of the display that bends is sitting in the hollow. So the air gap exists in this plastic display, but it's not visible to the naked eye. It just feels like a cohesive, solid, heavy because it's compact kind of device, and it also just feels really finished and really complete. I've been using this phone for a few hours, and the crease doesn't seem as visible to me on the Razer as it does on other devices. Part of that might be because it is horizontal, and there's just less of it, you know? It's a more narrow device. I think that whenever you have any texture or color or movement, or when you're reading something, you're not gonna notice it. And normally I notice the crease a little bit more when I've got a mostly black or mostly white background and I'm just not really seeing it. If I put my finger here, I can feel it, but I think that the design is good enough that this is going to largely convince people who are really anti-crease that this is a decent way to design a phone. The screen's durability is gonna be a major concern for anybody who's seriously considering a foldable phone and not just the wear and tear of folding and unfolding it. You could crush pixels if you press too hard, you could gouge the display with a ring or a fingernail or a set of keys, so you do wanna be careful, um, but I don't know if you necessarily need to baby this one quite as much. The Razer has two screens. There's this external screen and then the one you see when you unfold it. The external screen is 2.7 inches from side to side, and this is where you're going to see the time, uh, your battery life, any notifications, where you're able to kind of toggle any control. So if you're playing music, you'll be able to pause from here, skip tracks, respond to alerts and see them, and of course access some very basic settings. Right below that, you've got the 16 megapixel camera. This is gonna be the main camera display, which is great news because you can use it to take a photo of yourself and you can flip open the phone and use it to take photos of other people. Uh, you've got dual LED flash. There's a microphone on the front. At the bottom of the phone is the chin. And yes, this does echo the original Motorola Razr design, but it serves another purpose. First, 
It houses the fingerprint scanner. Placement here is pretty good because you'll be able to unlock the phone really easily when it's open and when it's closed. And you'll also be able to use Google Pay really easily. So you unlock the phone and authenticate all in one movement. Because the phone is so thin, this chin down here is also what houses all of the antennas, Wi-Fi, your GPS, and the vibration modules. This chin is pretty thick and clunky and I haven't always liked them in the past. I wanted to see what it would do when I was watching video. And in fact, I find that it offers a really good handhold. <laughs> so I can comfortably hold the phone with one hand and that keeps my fingers from accidentally pressing the screen while I'm watching something. Here you've got the speaker that runs across the entire base and you've got a USB-C port. There is no headphone jack, but you will be able to use the USB-C headphones that come in the box and there is a dongle in the box as well. This phone is made from three materials. You actually have Gorilla Glass 3 that is protecting this external display. You also have a lot of stainless steel inside the phone and here outside on the frame. And then you've got resin on the back, which is a nice way of saying plastic. Famous Motorola dimple on the back with the Batwing logo. And it is pretty durable feeling. I would not be afraid to drop it on its back. This is a long, tall phone. It's got a 6.2 inch screen here and a 21 by nine dimension. So that's not your usual three by four dimension that you're gonna get on the outer display. The whole purpose of this is that you can comfortably use it in one hand if you need to. I can hold it easily with one hand. Closing it and opening it with one hand has been a little bit of a struggle. I'm getting used to it. I could definitely fit it into my back pocket a little bit more easily than my front pocket, but my purse is absolutely no problem. So you do have that massive portability here. I mean, this is super easy to carry around and I can see myself using the device, using the outer display a lot, very easily, especially one-handed. The keyboard is really narrow, so I was worried about typing accuracy, but we've got Google's baked-in keyboard here and actually it hasn't been a problem at all so far. Because it's got Android 9 on board, that also means that you can split the screen into two with certain supported apps. I tried it out and I don't think that I would use it very often uh, because of the dimensions. Each app is just a little bit too small. Motorola has of course worked really closely with Google to make sure that the apps work seamlessly from the outside to the inside, but there are a lot fewer apps that you can initiate on the outside of the Razer to open up on the inside. Google Assistant is one, the camera. If you start taking a selfie, you can open up the phone and access the camera from the interior screen. Messages and Gmail will also work. For the most part, if you're using any apps on the interior screen and you close the phone, that kind of closes them out, you're done. But there are a couple exceptions. For example, if you've got a phone call on and then you turn it on speakerphone and close the device, you can keep your call going while you're walking down the street. Motorola phones run a pretty pure version of Android, but there are extra touches. For example, I can twist the phone to launch the camera and I can chop it to turn on the flashlight. There's an entire list of things that you can do inside the phone. One that I really like is being able to turn on this cartoon on the outside to get people's attention when you're taking photos of them. You can expect that to be really useful for kids or dogs or I don't know. Yes, the Motorola Razr does have a notch. This is where the speakers live and also the front facing camera, five megapixels, why so low? Because most of your photos are gonna be taken with this main 16 megapixel camera and the one on the inside is mostly gonna be used for video calls. One thing I do wanna draw your attention to is this perimeter that runs across the outside of the display that's sort of separating this plastic display from the bezels and it's actually wide enough for me to put my fingernail in and run all the way around the device. This concerns me a little bit just because if you get your finger or some other item in here and add leverage in the wrong way, could that potentially lift up the sides of the display? We've seen that kind of damage happen before and on such an expensive device, that's really worrisome. Also, even in the short time that I've used this phone, several hours, but not even a full day, I've noticed that dust particles have already started collecting, especially around the top of the device. So this might be an area that you would have to clean, but clean very carefully. The phone isn't exactly waterproof, it's not rated, but it is nano coated on the inside and it is splash resistant even on the outside. So I think you would be able to gently clean it without worrying about doing damage to the screen itself. Motorola is pretty confident that the screen is gonna be durable. Even though it's made out of plastic, the company has had a lot of experience building a more durable plastic 
display back to 2011 when it had something called Shatter Shield. So what happens if the display does get damaged? At the time of this filming, we don't have exact details, but we do know that Motorola will have a plan in place. The Motorola Razr is a premium phone, so you might expect premium photography. But from what I've seen so far, you may not be buying this phone for the cameras. You do have portrait mode for front and rear facing photos, and there's also a night mode built into here as well, HDR, all the usuals. However, you don't have telephoto, you don't have wide angle lenses, and those are features that you would expect to see on other premium devices. The Samsung Galaxy Fold, for example, has six camera lenses. That might be a little bit overkill, um, but it might definitely also have an edge there because there's more that you can do with your photography. So you might be asking yourself how long battery will last on the Razer, and Motorola says it will last a full day. There are actually two batteries here, one on either side of the fold. Together, they give you 2,500 milliamp hours. I'm really curious to see how battery life will actually be, just because I used the Fold and that had the same system of two batteries on either side, but I, it didn't seem to last as long as I had expected. That's because two batteries usually aren't quite as efficient as one. I think that this form factor could actually work. This is something that people know how to use. We've done it. And we want that screen size and having the foldable screen actually gives us access to more of that display to do the things that we're gonna do. And so far, I could see how I could use it every day. Uh, there are minor refinements that I might wanna see. And of course, I wanna test the heck out of this phone to make sure that battery life is good, see how the photography is, and see how that screen durability holds up over time. But I've gotta say, at least initially, this is a phone that I'm pretty excited about. I think it could be a real competitor to the Galaxy Fold. I think we're gonna see other manufacturers creating something with this kind of top-down folding design. But this isn't going to be the end of the road either. There's still gonna be a lot more foldable phone designs as the industry figures out where we're going with this and even if we're going with foldable phones. I also think that the pricing is pretty competitive for now. Foldable phones are expensive, and when you're looking at $2,000, $2,600 for this premium, huge foldable tablet device that you can't even fit into your own pocket, then $1,500, relatively speaking, is starting to look pretty good. There's obviously so much more to see and do with the Motorola Razr in the coming months. I'm personally gonna be testing the crap out of this device, including the durability of the screen and the hinge. So stay tuned for so much more.